Oh, I think I've just jizzed in my pants. Why? Because I've got the new Canon 2470 f2.8 2. Actually, there's one key difference when you look at the new one and compare it to the old one. The old one actually has a reverse zoom at 24. The front bit is actually extended. And when you go towards the telly end, it goes back in, which is a bit weird, isn't it? Also, the hood is actually attached here, so when you actually extend it, it looks like the lens is actually fisting your lens hood. We don't actually have a lens hood here, but that's how it is. The new one is much more conventional, you see? This is at its widest end. The old telly extends. Of course, the lens hood attaches to the front bit here. But there was a good reason why it was a reverse zoom. That's because when the hood is fixed to here, throughout the range you get adequate shading. With the front part of the lens retracted, you get more shading, less at the wider end. But with this, the more conventional one, it's more likely that you get adequate shading only at the wider end. Mm. It's been fat bastardized, it's shorter and fatter, which also means new filter sizes. It's a proper wide boy now with an 82mm filter size, the older one had 77mm. The newer one certainly is a better shape to make one of those lens mug things though. Another benefit of this new lens is that it's lighter. The older one is about 950 grams, which was rip your arms out of your socket heavy. This is still heavy, but it's 805 grams, so, so you lose about one eighth of the weight. Great. I'm not quite so sure how they managed to shave that amount of weight off, especially as this has got more elements in it unless they filled the last one, the old one, with mercury and just took that out of this one. But actually when you feel the front of it, you realise that the filter thread here is actually plastic. More plastic. One dents and one will completely snap off or strip the threads off. Nothing is kai proof really, but given the choice, I'd take the metal filter threads any day. Look, the old one, made of metal, we dropped this a few times just for fun. Ben, well, it doesn't take filters now, so same thing. But still, it's metal. I like metal. It makes the airport security go, you know, the alarm thing go. I like that. I never like using this because it was, you know, it was only about 150 grams more than this. But it's no fun. I like that lady's pose. Wide open. Now, as I said, it's an improved optical formula. This has got 18 elements with 13 groups now. The old one had 16 elements. You know, if you look at the MTF charts, which I don't, I don't look at them, then you'll see that this is actually a better performer in theory. So they say, buses and trams. So I'm going to just use zoom it anyway. No point looking at charts though. Let's look at real stuff. Photos and shit like that. Waste level shooting. Probably done run by gangs. So uh shit, it's still going out on YouTube, isn't it? Oh well. Who needs life? She was just trying to take a photo of, well, I guess, just taking a photo of the, the, the scenery, and he just got, Now oh, you're taking pictures of me. I bought you that camera. How does this perform? When you can look at MTF charts, and say MPF, something completely different. All day, but uh, well, there's only one way to find out. It's the wide open, at 24. 
All right, the MTF charts look better, but what difference does it actually make in use? Oh, don't drop the cameras. You haven't got strap on. Let's get in this. Oh. Wide open then at 24mm, the Mark II is more refined. It's sharper in the middle and also in the corners than his older brother. It's quite noticeably better at resolving the details. Distortion seems quite similar, mild at the wide. Olympic speed walking, speed walking. Oh. See you, Lambie. Quick switch to new one. Look at that speed, speed mounting. Oh, assistance these days. Take that. You're fired. Jeez. Young people. <laughs> you get what you pay for. <laughs> oh dear. The creamy bokehner seems quite similar, although it seems that the new one is a tad smoother. He keeps taking pictures of me, I'm gonna take pictures of him. Oh, have a we've got some Canon fanboy over there. Sitting there, oh, check him out. It's like a war zone here, people with cameras. Go on, Theo, shoot me as well. Look at that, three, three people. It's brilliant. Andy, showing a lot of legs today, so. Happy time for you guys on the. <laughs> Does actually feel a lot of plastic here. It's made in Japan though, so you know. It's good plastic. I think I made one of those when I was in school. They're quite easy to make they are. You just get loads loads of paper with glue on it and shit like that and you get some wires. That's uh and somebody got paid for that. It's great, isn't it? I give me the money and I'll do that. Easy. What about not so wide open performance? Although you can still see vignetting at f4 at 24mm with both of them, when stopped down to this amateur, the Mark II just does it all much better. From wide to telly, you can see with the 15mm crops just how much better the new one is. No colour fringing with either of them, which is alright, isn't it? There is a 10 year gap between these two lenses, and although not to take anything away from the original, this new one is quite an impressive performer. Yeah, give me the. Give me, uh, okay. I don't want the old lens. Nothing wrong with the old lens, it's just uh, not the new one, isn't it? That's how it works, isn't it? You know? They market you the new ones, so you like new ones. They sweep the other one under the rug. It didn't exist. Two is number one. But how do they compare in terms of value for money? Well, they don't really, do they? Because you see, this is quite a bit more expensive than what the old one was a few months ago. I like that, guys. Well, you know, it's all relative, isn't it? Because you can't exactly say L lenses are value for money. Well, I mean, it all depends, isn't it? I mean, they're quite expensive. But you're watching this video, so, you know, don't say anything about that. It's like going to an expensive free Michelin star restaurant and going, uh, expensive, isn't it? That's not good value for money. You can get cheaper at Mackey D's. The thing is, this is actually almost double the price of the old one. That's a lot of money. I mean, this is not like $50 more. This is like 1,000 US dollars more than the old one. Can you get that amount of value by looking at the improvements of this? I don't know. But the thing is, that doesn't really matter because you can't get the old one now, it's discontinued. And I've got what well, I've got in my bag, so uh, haha. So I just enjoy spending a lot of money on this new one. Great. Right. A good lens is a good lens, and this is really quite good. Knowing what the old one was priced at just not so long ago and what this new one is priced at now is irksome, but doesn't make it a bad lens. 
Of course, it's a new product, so the prices will be higher. But as well as being much more than the last one, it's about 20% more than the Nikon 24-70 f2.8. For this extra bump in price, I would have expected that they at least put IS in, but it seems that you're paying the extra premium for sharper images. So it all depends on how badly you need it, really. If the price doesn't bother you, then by all means get yourselves one of these fantastic standard zooms. If you don't, then you just might have to compromise.